right, this is the moment we've all been waiting for when the grapes are ready to pick. I'm never sure what is the optimum time. And as you can see, they're looking quite nice. And when you taste them, they taste very sweet. Not much acid. But very nice indeed. Our buckets are ready. We've got a bottle of sterilising solution. I'm going to give each bucket a little rinse out. Then mark the buckets up with numbers so that I can remember which grape vines, which grapes from which vine have gone into each bucket. I was given the vines years ago. I know them to be Saval, if that's the right way to say it, um, Bacchus and Ryzen. So, and I know the Saval, that's very distinctive. But the other two, I don't know. Yeah. Welcome to my shed, Bernie's shed. The time has come. We've picked our grapes. I've got them, I've bucketed them up into the buckets and I've put numbers on the buckets so I'll know which batch they're from. The grapes have all been washed under running water. And um, our job now, that's not what I'm doing, We've set the press up. All of this has been sprayed. I use a spray. There we go. And in there is is um, sterilising liquid that I've made up. There's the press. Let me show you how we've made it. Okay, so, oh, Daisy. So in the bottom, plenty of little arms for the for the stuff to go through. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put that one in the top. That one in the bottom, because that's a thick one. But there'll be quite a lot of weight onto that when the time comes. And now I'm going to put my grapes in. And what I like to do is my hands are, I've washed my hands off. So click. Hygiene is the most important thing of all. So, and I like to squeeze a bit out of them as I go. These stalking them. You, if I would suggest that if you were doing a lot, you probably wouldn't bother to do this. You'd probably just straight straight in. But I think that there's the possibility of getting flavour from the from the stems, and I can't imagine it being a good flavour. So I think this is probably the best way. So we're stripping them off, and as we're stripping them off, I'm giving them a bit of a squeeze, and it won't be long before we start getting the juice running like so and also I've noticed that in the press I'm going to put one in the wrong bucket in a minute I've noticed that sometimes it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on you still get whole grapes that don't get pressed and what you really want is the is the, um, the juice to to have as least amount of contact with the air as you can possibly get. So it's the um, effectiveness of the press is quite important that it does actually get to crush all the grapes. So to to uh, get over that, I've made <coughs> some of these bit tube holes in ordinary plumber's plastic pipe. And when I've got quite a bit in there, I should then drop these in. So I build it up till I get up to here somewhere where I can get the pressure on. So here we go. Now at the moment, my tap's turned off. And I'm beginning to get a puddle in here now. I'll get a bit more so you can see how it works. And then we'll turn the tap on. And we're starting to fill the jars. Now all of those jars have been sterilised with a mixture of, uh, well you can just use a straight from the shop sterilisation or you can make up your own. I like to make my own, own up with sodium metabisulfate and, uh, and uh, um, citric acid and that makes a really potent um, steriliser. 
So that's uh, that works a treat. That does because it gives off the gas. All of my buckets were sterilised before I went to the to the plot where the grapes are. Spread them around. Okay. Well, look. Last little bunch. If anybody knows what they are, I don't know what these uh, variety are. It's either Bacchus or Horizon. So if you know, make a little note on the on my site. <laughs> So there we go, that's the last from this bucket and then we'll move on to the next bucket of the same type of grape. I've got three types, I've got Bacchus, Ryzen and Seval, or Seval, I'm sure you'll put me right. Um, I know the Seval is a very distinctive leaf but I don't know the difference between the Bacchus and the rising, but I've kept them separate. Now it's time for one of these to go in. They've been sprayed with a thing, one one side and one the other side. There we go, like so. And now I'm ready for the next. There we go. And then we put some blocks in, build it up to the top. It's sometimes better actually not to fill up in total. So then some extra spaces to give us room for, for screwing down. Hold on a minute. Did that wrong didn't we? So I put the plate on first, spread the load, and that goes on. I haven't done it for a year. There we go. An extra washer to give us a little bit of extra turning. There we go. And there we go. Squeeze it down. carry on filling up, but we've got to keep our eye on it because we don't want that overflowing, do we? And before we finish, we need one Camden tablet. Now, there's several ways of adding this to your wine must. They do suggest that on the packet there that uh, that you mix them in a small amount of, of warm water. But I like to not wishing to dilute my my wine any further I like to crush it up between two teaspoons like so get it as fine as you possibly can like so and then add that oh Daisy oh, oh well near enough <laughs> I'll drop and put more in in a minute there we go I'll put it into there and give that a stir up. So now then, we're going to make some yeast. We're going to prepare our yeast for our, the mix. Well, for our, for our must, which is already going. We need sugar, a bottle of boiled water and left to cool, some vitamin B1 tablets, and some citric acid, and of course, our chosen yeast. Now, this is the way I like to do it. It's totally homespun. What I've done is I've crushed one of those B1 tablets into a spoon. He goes in first. Then, a small amount of sugar. Then, a small amount of citric acid. And then our chosen yeast. Now, I'm actually actually making enough here just for a half a gallon. It's my remaining half a gallon. So, 
I then used the whole packet, just about half of it, in the bottle, shake it up, and then I'll keep that somewhere warm for about 24 hours. And then it's ready to put into our mask. The yeast is now working. I can tell that by opening that and you get just that little fizz. I'll get me spray again. Give it a little drop of that so that we don't get any uh, any bugs going in that could have settled around there and polluted it. And what we're going to do now is add that to that. On. Have a little spray just in case I've got any bits because uh, don't want to attract fruit, fruit fly, that's the trouble. And there we go, that is ready. That should, if I keep it at the right temperature, all being well, it should <laughs> start bubbling away fairly soon. Okay, we've added the yeast, all of our bottles are now all standing ready to uh, bubble away. In fact, they're bubbling away. There we go. That is actually quite a fast bubbling, that one. Oh, there we go. And just a little thing of mine. I've got mine stood on a plant propagator, which in the evenings I'll plug that in when it's cold in the shed and that keeps the temperature right for the initial fermentation so, there we go next stop when that's all finished if they'll be racked and as you can see in the background there I've got some from last year and they're ready for the corks to be uh, frozen off and and then recorked from a sparkling wine and that's as I say that'd be another another video so bye for now see you with the next one bye